All righty. All right. So, hello, everyone. I'm Chris Boyd, and this is Taylor. And we're going to do a demonstration on Azure Container Infrastructure. So ideally, what I'd like to cover here are a couple examples. Uh, primarily, we're going to go through building a Docker image. We're going to package our flow inside of that Docker image. We're going to publish it to a private registry. This isn't going to be in Azure. This is going to be in a private Docker hub registry. Then we're going to deploy Azure Container Infrastructure, which is kind of a parallel for you know, Google App Engine or parallel for uh, ECS and AWS. <clears throat> then we're going to configure that to use this private registry image for the Prefect agent. And then we're going to demonstrate two ways that we can use that. The first is going to be setting up a deployment that uses the sub-process uh, infrastructure. And then the second one is going to be using the custom Prefect collection, uh, the Azure Container Instance job. So without any further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, all of this is sanitized and I will be able to share this work uh, so you can follow along step by step. I will attempt to call out anything that you might need to know. Primarily, the main concerns that you're gonna need to know are uh, you will need Azure credentials that authorize you and give you the ability to create containers and storage, et cetera. So, uh, I'm going to try my best to walk through these, and if there's any issues, we'll discuss them. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is create a private Docker registry. In the sake of not recreating that wheel, I have already done that. So let's just pull that up right now. So I have Chaboy private test. This is a private repository. And as you can see, I have no tags, no images. There's nothing in here. So we can call one done. Next, we're going to create a new directory, and this is just so we can kind of keep our working environment clean. So if we can see here, I have a working directory, but let's go into new test. We can see I have a clean working directory. I have nothing in here. So now we're going to write a simple hello world flow. Uh, for the most part, you should be able to copy and paste these exactly as is. So what I'm doing here is just a little command line where I'm catting until end of file which is right here, and then piping that into flow.py. So we're just going to copy and paste. Now if we look, we have our flow.py. Great. Moving down to step three, we're going to create a requirements file. So in this one, we have ADLFS and Prefect Azure. So ADLFS is only required if you want to use Prefect Store, excuse me, Azure storage for your blocks, right? So if you want to write out to, you know, prefix storage using blocks or Azure storage or whatever the case is, you're going to need ADLFS. Prefect Azure is only necessary for running jobs using the Azure container instance job. So this is specifically for the collections piece. This won't be required for the process piece. So just keep those things in mind. Add those in. I'm going to make sure they're there. Requirements. Great. So now we've got both of those. So now we're going to create a Docker file. This is a very, very, very simple Docker file. Uh, so ideally, what we're doing here, and I'll walk through each line. We have from Prefect HQ, Prefect 2, Python 3.9. That just happens to be the one I'm using. There's no particular reason why I chose 3.9 other than that's just what my environment is right now. I'm copying flow.py by name into opt prefect flows, and that's because that's the default path that prefect's going to look at. I'm copying requirements.txt into opt prefect flows, and then I'm pip installing requirements.txt. So that's going to pip install ADLFS and prefect Azure right into the container. And then let's make sure that looks okay. Perfect. So now we've got our flow, our requirements, and our Docker file. So now we can build that image. So I have already authenticated to Docker, right? So I did a Docker login. Um, if you have not done a Docker login, it's going to require, it's going to prompt you for your username and your password. Uh, and that should be the same one that you've already authenticated to set up this repository. From there, Let's 
fix this. Let's do Docker build platform is Linux slash AMD64. The reason for this is because I'm currently running on an M1 Mac. So if I didn't do this, it's going to pick up that it's ARM and then my images aren't going to execute properly where they're trying to execute. So I'm forcefully telling it to run AMD64. We're going to tag it with private test latest. And then I'm going to tell it to build from this current path. And so what that means is it's going to look in my current path with that Docker file. So now it's doing all the things. We're picking up the requirements. And so, Ford, if this wasn't going to be executed locally, um, would this be similar? Like if you were executing, say, an ACI? Or what do you mean? in, like, um, this Docker build, oh no, this Docker build step would be the same. Yeah. Regardless. So, I mean, this, like, you're, you're I'm building, building it local. Yeah. But yeah. in theory, like you would run this maybe as part of your CI CD pipeline, um, right. in which case, you know, if you're running on Linux, then this step isn't strictly necessary because it picks up the platform that you're running on. But it's like you can specify multiple platforms. I think really I just want to call attention. If you're running an M1 Mac, you need this command. If you're not running an M1 Mac, it's optional. Got it. If it's Windows, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Got it. Makes you're sense. on your own. Um, so now we're going to copy and push our registry. So we're going to first make sure that image worked. So we're going to do Docker image LS. It looks good. Let's just exec into it real quick. So let's do a Docker exec, or we can do a Docker run. Paste. Slash IT, I'm going to go into a shell. Probably helps if I had this right. We're just going to make sure that it built the image right. Okay, so we're in the image, and if we do a pip freeze, we should see prefect, we should see ADLFS, we should see prefect Azure. So there's prefect Azure. There is ADLFS. And... We have prefect at file. Great, that looks good. Okay, so we're gonna exit that. Our image successfully built, so now let's push it. I just didn't wanna waste the effort pushing if there was an issue with the build. So we're gonna push this latest tag that we just pushed. Uh, and again, this is a private repository. So if you haven't done a Docker login yet, this will fail for you. Nice. Okay. So this is really um, a step in the process of like writing the flow, building this image. And now we're going to yep. think about once we have that image in the registry, now we can think about execution. Yep. So exactly like you said, I think. Ideally, this should be part of your workflow if you're a developer. You know, you're writing a flow, you want to make some changes, you know, you write your, your flow.py, you make your changes, you commit them, and then you build your new image. Um, ideally, you could either do this individually on your own laptop like I'm doing, or maybe you do it as part of a CI CD build where you git push and on git push and git commit, you know, a new build triggers and does this for you and just pushes it into the registry. Both are completely viable. Um, nice. So what I just did here, I, I like to reuse a lot of the tags and values that I use because we're going to use a lot of these later on just for other commands. So anything I think is a time save, we'll just try to export. So here I'm just exporting the image tag uh, so we don't have to reuse it later. So the next step is we're going to set up ACI, so Azure Container Infrastructure. If you don't know, uh, let me go ahead and pull it up. So we have Discourse. Um, ACI agent. Let's see. Setting up Azure on ACI. I know it's here somewhere. Here we go. Yeah, I can pull okay. it up too. So 
Yeah, I just want others to know, like, this is kind of a really good resource. So Ryan, thank you for putting this together. Um, I think this is currently undergoing work. So if you can't see it right now, that's just because it's undergoing some administrative, you know, this was originally written in August. So we're bringing it up to date with some of our later changes. Um, that said, the process is very straightforward. What I'd like to call attention to is what we discussed initially, two ways to run this. The first is process, which was originally when this was written. And then the second is going to be Azure Container Instance Jobs, which is going to be spawned off container instances. So mostly I followed this. With that said, we're literally going to walk through these steps one by one as just part of my process. So if you don't like the way that I've done it, you know, there's also this article to do it as well. So let's go into our portal, azure.com, and we'll go into our resource groups. We'll refresh, make sure that everything looks good. Uh, nothing really notable here other than I deleted the one I was working in earlier so that we could actually just start this from scratch. So requires a user service principle with appropriate permissions. If you're doing this through command line and you set up a service principle, be authenticated as that service principle. If you're doing it as your own user, you can do an AZ login. Uh, and then if you want to make sure, uh, I think it's AZ account list. Let's see your account that you're logged in as. So I'm logged in as my own user right now. So first we're going to export a variable. We're going to use this. This is going to be the name of my resource group that we're going to use for the rest of this. So void AC prefect agent. Let's go ahead and create a resource group. So Azure group create with the name of the value that I just exported in the location is to us. Great, just created, succeeded. We're gonna just double check and verify that that worked. So does it exist? True, great. So now the next one. Um, luckily, there's really not too much to setting up container infrastructure. Uh, it's basically one big command. You can either do it through CLI or you can do it through container.yaml. Um, but before we go that route, we first need to make sure that our API URL and our API key are valid. So you're going to need these because we need to pass them into the agent. So for the sake of this, I just have some dummy values. I'm not going to set these because I actually have them set for real under the hood, so I don't have to expose them. But double check them. It should look in this format, right? API.prefect.cloud slash API, and then your account ID, and then your workspace ID. And then second, you'll have your prefect API key here. I have a dummy API key. And so before we even go any further, like let's just do a quick test. And so I wrote just kind of a quick test. Um, there's an article on Discourse as well of validating that you're using a good API key and a good URL. So what that's going to look like is this. We're just going to copy and paste this curl command. And what this curl this command is, awesome. is doing is taking that API key and taking that API URL on the slash help endpoint. And we're going to make sure that it's good. Boyd and, and I have spent a lot of time debugging <laughs> exactly yeah. this thing. Like so often it is an issue um, along these lines. So that's awesome. Yeah. I promise you, for anyone out there that might be watching this, if you're getting a 404, double check your API URL. If you're getting a 401, that says, I know who you are, but I don't approve. That means that your API key is good, but not for that workspace. If you get a 403, it says you have a bad API key. It is not a good API key. So now that we've validated our API key is good, we can go through with creating the container infrastructure. So here we've got this long command uh, that has a bunch of values set. Alternatively, if you want to do it the YAML way, I've got a way that we can do it that way as well. Um, so kind of showing what that looks like. I'm going to go back up a directory, even though I copied everything in. So I have this sanitized container.yaml. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what that looks like. So this is what a sanitized one looks like. This is the full on thing. We're just going to take this and replace the values, right? So we have the name, which is the prefect agent. That's going to be the name in the container instance. 
the name of the container. This can be whatever you want. The image, specifically, I'm calling attention to the image. This is index.docker.io. This is the actual like Docker Hub root qualified name. The repository, which is my private repository, the image and the tag. So it needs to be in this format. Otherwise, it won't be able to find your image. And if you're not using Docker, like it needs to be the fully qualified of whatever hub that you're using. Environment variables. So if you'll notice, we do have to supply the API URL and the API key. But if you notice, these are secure values. And what that means is that we'll pass them in, but they will not be exposed and they'll be scrubbed when they're tried to display anywhere. They'll be scrubbed in the portal. So you won't be able to display these. They will be secured. If you don't like doing it this way, uh, you can alternatively use it through Azure Key Vault, but that's out of scope for the sake of this demonstration. And then I just have an extra prefix API enable HTTP2 here, just because I don't want it to hang up the socket after a while. The next step, we have the command. This tells it to pipe a bash command and then start prefect agent start dash Q ACI test. So this is the part that's going to start the work agent. The rest of this is pretty much all copy paste. You don't need to worry about that. And then the main consideration that we need right here is the image registry credentials. Again, because we're not pulling from Prefect, we're actually pulling a custom built image that I built. And again, remember our flow exists inside of that image. We need to tell it what is the server that we're looking for it at. And what's our username and password? This is gonna be the same thing that you did the Docker login with. So if you're not sure what server it is, you can do a Docker info and it'll tell you the registry. This is what you're looking for right here. If you try to send in the whole thing, Azure will yell at you that it doesn't expect the protocol or the V1. So it's just looking for index.docker.io. So with all that said, um, we should be able to just copy this in. So let's double check our values real quick to make sure we don't make a mistake. So we have our resource group, we have our name, we have our image, which is index.docker.io slash chaboy private test latest. We have our secure environment variables. The API URL is set to an exported value, which we already proved up here works. Uh, same with the key. Our registry login is index.docker.io and our password and our username are redacted. So we could update those, but I don't have those set right now on the command line. So what I'm actually going to do, um, I'm gonna use the container.yaml that I already have built. So I have one here that's not sanitized. So in the sake of not disclosing my personal information, Let's move into new test and we're going to run it through the file way. So this would work. Um, this command does work and I did run this earlier. I just redacted these for the sake of this. So it's up to you which way you want to do it. They're exactly the same one. We're just creating that file directly. So create container in void RG file container.yaml. So this is going to take a minute or two. Um, what it's doing right now is it's provisioning. So it has to provision the infrastructure uh, in Azure. Um, it's checking all your permissions and everything. It's setting up all the resource manager calls. And then beyond that, it actually needs to reach out and authenticate to Docker Hub and pull that image. So luckily, that image is pretty small. Um, you know, I think it's not much larger than the one we were already using for Prefect, but So from there, if you're following along, the next couple things that we have left, um, the first one is we can create our deployment to run in process mode. So just kind of reiterating, if, again, if you're following or watching this after the fact, this will run a flow that currently exists inside of the image. If you want to use the image, but you don't want to prepackage your code, you can do that too, but then you're gonna to wanna to use a storage block. So you would pass in a storage block equals storage where you've defined your storage and pull the code into the image, which is a very viable solution. This is just like 
kind of uh, end to end demonstration. So it looks like this finished, succeeded. Let's go ahead and take a look. So if we refresh, we should have void ACI prefect agent now. And we have prefect agent. We can see it's running. So let's go ahead and look at the container. If we go to the logs, we can now see the agent started and it's looking for work in ACI test. Excellent. So with that in mind, now we can create our deployment and run our deployment. So let's go back here and we're gonna do the same thing. Uh, we've got create a deployment. We're gonna copy and paste this in, make sure I'm in the right folder. Okay, so uh, anything to note here. So we have our import statement to run the deployment. You'll notice I'm using deployment, but I'm not using build from flow. Um, if you have, if you don't have direct access to the source, right? If you don't have direct access to the flow because it exists inside of the image, then you won't be able to reference and import the flow. You can work around that by having it just locally available to you and then build from flow. Um, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do this. If you do that and you don't have, and you have parameters in your flow though, like let's say in our flow, we were passing in some parameter, you know, X equals seven. Uh, this wouldn't actually show that in the UI. You would have to also pass in a parameter schema as well, which I can, I think we have a demonstration and discourse on that, but just something to keep in mind. So what we're creating here is a process ACI deployment using flow name health check. Our path that it's going to look for this is opt prefect flows. Remember that was back in step one when we created the Docker image and then the entry point. The file was called flow.py and the entry point for that flow is called health check. So it's going to look in opt prefect flows for flow.py and the entry point will be health check. So now let's run deployment.py. Okay, so now if we go into our deployments, let's refresh. Now we have process ACI. And if we do a quick run, go back to the agent. Hopefully I got the queue right. Pressure's on. Let's make sure that uh, we set it up to listen right. So we do have test ACI. Did I get that right? And we didn't. So it's actually, I messed up on the label. So the label's ACI test. So let's just go ahead and make that change real quick. Rerun it. Okay. So we'll cancel this flow run. It'll never be picked up because I don't have an agent that's listening for test ACI. Let's rerun this. There we go, pending. And so you notice it went from scheduled. Scheduled says it hasn't been picked up by the agent yet. Pending says it's been submitted to the agent and it's trying to be, um, it, it's instantiating the infrastructure. So that means it needs to spin up the infrastructure that we're looking for. So if you notice, we got an error here. So indentation error, an indent does not match any outer indentation. Looks like I actually had an issue in my code. I'm in the flow so, code. Yeah. 
So I think that was probably a copy pasta error. Yeah. Right there. So what Ooh. I'm going to do way outside of the scope of this, instead of rebuilding the image and repushing the image, which I mean might be a viable thing to do. We're just going to go into flows and we're gonna edit it right here. With the Vim uh, boy. Wow. Go yeah. go go Chris. So we'll do this live. It's never a demo unless like something goes wrong, right? Absolutely, but I feel like you're being very calm, so props. All right, so we'll go in here and do that. update that. Does everything else look good? Trying to. Only one way to find out, but. Yeah, I think that should be right. So what we can do as a first step, we can actually just run this directly just to make sure that the flow works. Right, because again, like we have prefect inside of this image. So, nice. so it works. So now let's just go back and do what we just did. Um, so we'll go back to the logs here, bring this back down, go back to the overview, go back to the containers, back to the logs. So now that we're back to the logs, we will submit a new deployment. Ideally, the way that should have properly been done, that was completely just like live. Uh, ideally, you would fix that in the source code um, and then rebuild your image, push your new image, and then deploy new agent. And there we go. So it just completed. Nice. If we look here, we can see It just submitted, so downloading flow code, host network, you know, wandering loon exited cleanly, wandering loon, and there's all our logs. So what did we just cover? That was creating a new flow, creating a Docker file, setting up requirements to run in Azure, building ACI, uh, and then setting up a deployment to run that flow in ACI uh, with a little bit of live debugging. But this runs inside of the agent, right? And so as I just mentioned, if you wanted to update code here, you would either A, have to pull it in through a storage block, or B, um, you would have to repush the agent and then stop this agent. You know, you'd have to come out here to overview and stop it. And that's not really ideal. So I'll cover the other one very briefly um, of how to do this, where we start new container instances for each one. So this isn't really too much extra steps. Uh, we already installed Prefect Azure, but let's make sure that it's installed locally on our system. So we'll do pip install Prefect Azure. It's already all installed. We'll make sure that these blocks are registered so that when we go to the Prefect homepage, they're visible. Okay, now we're going to go to create blocks, Azure. Azure Container Instance job. So let's go here. I think I actually deleted mine so I can demonstrate this. Yeah. So briefly going through this, you're going to need a Docker registry block. If you remember when I pointed out the image, image registry credentials, you need your username, password, and a server. This is still necessary because under the hood, what has to happen is ACI and Prefect have to submit a command to Azure Resource Manager to say, hey, start me some new infrastructure. And in order to start that new infrastructure, it has to know how to retrieve that image. So we will make sure that those values are already populated. I've already got that here under Docker Registry. And then we also have ACI credentials block. Again, this is like either your credentials or a service principal that has the permissions to create infrastructure. So I've got this one right here. So I'm not gonna create those two, but we will create the container instance block. So I think that one is this one right here, Azure Container Instance Job. So we'll add that. We'll give it a block name. We'll call it uh, Test ACI Block. 
there's a lot of fields here. Not everything is, is required. There's only a couple that are required. So we have name, image. So the image, this is the one that we have here in our image. So if we do Docker image, we have Chaboy private tests. But remember, we also actually need the full qualified one, right? So we need index dot docker dot io slash chowboy dot private test latest. So we need to pull the full one, uh, for example, like the one that came out of the sanitized container. So it needs to look like this. So make sure that's good. Command, you don't need to update that. You don't need to update GPUs unless you need them. You don't need to overwrite the entry point. By default, it's going to inherit the prefect entry point, which is what we've defined in the deployment. Um, right here is what we're looking for. So this is Docker registry. Even if you're not using Docker, if you're using another private registry, you still want a Docker registry credentials. And then ACI credentials, we're going to pick Boyd ACI creds. And what those are looking for is the ARM client ID, the client secret, and the ARM tenant ID. And you can get those in Azure AD. And then my Azure subscription ID. A quick way to get that is right here. So I'm in my container instances. I've got my subscription ID. So we can just copy and paste that in. And then the Azure resource group name, which is... ACI prefect agent. So we're going to create that block. And so we're now going to add this to our deployment. We can pretty much use almost the same exact deployment we created for the first step, but now we're going to pass in an infrastructure block and we're going to tell it to use this infrastructure block. And if you remember, if you get to this point, you're following along and you get errors, make sure that you have all the way back up here when we did the install, um, you need to have Prefect Azure installed inside of the agent. Uh, otherwise, you're going to get errors when you try to run it, and it'll say no block found. So all right, so we've got our block. Let's go back and do our deployment now. So we're going to come down here. Got this. I'm going to do then deployment. Actually, we've already got it. So just do paste. What are we missing? We're missing on the file. So we've got deployment two. And I think we're missing one thing here. So we need deployment dot apply. Is that right? Yeah. And then we also need to update the name of this, right? The name of this is test ACI block. We're just about done. So going back through this real quick, nothing else has changed. Uh, we have our Azure Container Instance job block. We have our import. Those were like the only two lines that we added to support this new block that we just created. And then I added this line. That's it. Our path is still nice. the same. Our entry point is still the same. Our work queue name. Let's make sure that matches since I had to change that the first time, right? Um, make sure where are our containers. Go back here. Prefect agent. Make sure the containers are still listening on the right thing. So they're still listening on ACI test. What did I have? ACI test, okay. And then I just updated the deployment name of this one to instance job ACI. So no, no other real changes, right? We just told it to load a block and apply that to infrastructure. So we'll deploy that. We'll go into deployments. Now we have our new deployment instance job ACI. Now the difference here is it's going to pull this image fresh. So if we run this quick run, fingers crossed, and we come here, we should see 
there we go. Waiting for container creation. It's starting a new Azure Container Instance nice. job. If we back out and we go back to the resource group, it's now going to be in pending on this side. Again, pending isn't a bad thing. Pending means that the request was received and it was submitted to resource manager and it's spinning up infrastructure right now. So if it fails at this point, it's failing at the infrastructure provisioning level. It could be that you're missing permissions on your user. It could be that your image is wrong. It could be that there's a block failure. Like there's a number of things that can go wrong at this point, but this means that it has been received and it's submitting off to infrastructure. So if we look, there's our new instance job. and failed and i'll bet it failed because if you remember i never went in and updated the flow code to begin with so let's do that super fast we go into our docker now we go into our flow and we can just basically do this so we updated that uh we'll do build update the build with that change did you update in the tutorial docs? The uh, yes. Slow code? Make sure I got that. Yeah, oh, that yeah. looks good. I don't know how I made that mistake. Maybe I just hit the delete <laughs> button or something. Honestly, it's good for of, troubleshooting and yeah. demonstrating, though. Absolutely. I get a lot of questions on like how to how to like troubleshoot, how to debug, and so probably the most useful yeah. thing this tutorial. Well, at the end of the day, I think that's a good reason why you should be fixing it from the source and not just live on like mm -hmm. where we were. But so all we'll do from here is as soon as this finishes, we'll push the new image. It'll take about 20 seconds to push the new image. And then we can just literally retry this flow. Sounds good. But that aside, I mean, what's key here is even this doesn't really, like, I know this failed. And if you're watching, I get it. Like, it's an error. It failed. But what this told me is that it actually pulled the image, right? Like, this was the same error we got initially. So, like, this to me is actually success. Like, we successfully provisioned an Azure Container Instance job fresh with the new flow. So... Push this, yeah, it's just like honestly, the Python is, is yeah. yeah, the Python's the easiest part. All right, so we've got our new image pushed, and so now we'll just do a retry. We'll come back here to resource groups, point prefect agent. We'll go into our container. We will go look at our logs. We should see that it's pulled up a new provision, waiting for container creation on Paradot Ardwork. Excellent. So if we look back, there's our new container. So we're just gonna give it a second while it provisions. This is the old one. Hasn't actually gone through yet. For container creation. Whenever it's ready. There we go. Now we can see it reran, and there's Beautiful. success. And so, so what did we do? Um, we started from scratch. We had no infrastructure. We had no flow code. We had no contents. We had no ACI. We had no Docker file. No image. No repository. We started from scratch. We created the repository. We created our flow. 
which is admittedly a very basic just demonstration. We set up our requirements file with the requirements that we needed specifically for these two tasks that we did. We created a basic Docker file, passed that in. We built that image, passed it up to our private image registry. We set up Azure Container Infrastructure, like from scratch. I mean, this you saw, this is it. So don't be intimidated by it. We can just copy and paste for the most part uh, and place in your own values. And then we created two separate deployments. We created one in process that runs within the same instance, and then another one that creates entirely new instances. And you could, in lieu of this, right, where we pass in this infrastructure and create this Azure Container Instance job block, let's say you had different images. You can configure each one of these to use a different image. So you can have your code stored in the images that way. So I hope this helps. And you know, good luck with your uh, prefix. Sweet. Thank you so much, Boyd. All righty. You guys have a good one. Yeah. I'm going to stop recording.